Welcome back, Culturians. This past weekend, I witnessed the return of another 80s era franchise, a, a set of films that certainly did its best to entertain. This revisit to the ghostly realm of Hollywood did seem to offer up some spooky magic, but not a sense of relief for theater owners, at least not from my perspective anyway. Of course, this film is almost its own kind of genre. It's not truly a comedy, it's not truly a horror, it's kind of a blend of both. In other words, it's probably in a genre of its own. And of course, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire absolutely mixed in some laughs with some money on this last weekend box office. So let's talk the five flickering specters of success that did make up all the earnings this last weekend. Here we go. Now, a quick reminder before we get started, please be sure to double check that you're still subscribed right down there. It's totally free if you're not, and it'll really help us get over 25K subs here, hopefully by the end of the month. That's a lot this week, but hey, I believe in you. Just hit that little red button, turn it to gray, and everything will be okay. And of course, thanks in advance. I really appreciate it. Now, behold, as Ghostbusters Frozen Empire emerges triumphant from the long shadows of a historically underperforming box office year to date. In other words, it's not been good. Last two months have not been good. So raking in a decent and higher than expected 45.2 million domestic in total is great news. And of course that's out of 4,345 theaters. Now this film was fueled in part by expanding the multi-generational appeal that it earned from the previous film. So it's more family friendly than the prior efforts of Ghostbusters 1 and Ghostbusters 2. And we'll get more into how this stand stands out against Afterlife in just a moment. But what's really impressive is it defied expectations, surpassing its predecessor and casting a chilling spell over audiences worldwide. And it did that in a lot of different ways. Now, although if you caught my review, which is right up there, they kind of abandoned the idea of being frozen in fear. But this is not a review. This is a box office breakdown. So let's press on. But first, a question. Can Frozen Empire sustain its momentum and exercise my lingering doubts about its overall performance, at least long term? You see, there are some giant, monstrous competitors that are just over the horizon, like a week away. And on the film's overall run, it does have a modest Hollywood budget. It's only about $100 million, with likely another $80 million to $100 million in the marketing costs for the overall spend on the film. So its break-even point would be about 420 million, and that seems kind of low. I mean, its, its predecessor, Afterlife, barely scrounged a total of 203 million global, at least for the entire box office run. That's not good. And for Sony, who is already reeling from a very rough start this year with Madam Web, they're really banking on some nostalgia here and some good word of mouth. The big challenge, as I mentioned a moment before, is that Godzilla X Kong, which opens soon, it's going to take a huge chunk of the target audience, that exact demographic, in fact, and that's scary. But we've really entered the realm of direct sequels and franchise legacies, where Frozen Empire follows its in an ectoplastic footstep of its predecessor, Afterlife, with returning cast members and a fresh directorial vision, which I think they should have stuck with the previous director. The stage is actually set for a Ghostbusters saga and blending that old school charm with the new audiences and everything else. The problem is that the box office here may not justify it. In fact, I don't think it will. I think this reboot cool or whatever we're going to call these things going forward, I don't think this is going to get a third film. In fact, I would expect it not to, because it's not going to do very well. Of course, it's not the only sequel that's in the top five films, which is why we're here. All you have to do is look around, and when you look at second place, you have Dune 2, adding another 17 million to its slowing domestic earnings of 233 million total. And then you have Kung Fu Panda 4, which I'm amazed they actually made, as the third one was certainly wearing thin already. Regardless, it added a $16.8 million to its $133 million total as well. So coming in fourth is the newcomer, Immaculate, 
which is featuring Sydney Sweeney, probably the hottest actress in Hollywood right now, who reportedly does a good job with a gory kind of a thriller. So believe it or not, that's actually a must see on my list this week, despite some negative reviews from places like Jacob over at uh, Society Reviews and Bounding Into Comics. Of course, they are going to be able to count on my $15 in their $5.3 million opening weekend, so good for them. And coming up the rear, or the tail end anyway, in fifth place is Mark Wahlberg's amazing feature, Arthur the King. Mark was able to add to the fifth pay place score with $4.3 million. Now, here's something that's very concerning. The whole number of earnings this weekend are once again incredibly disappointing. Here in the US with just a total weekend of barely over $100 million, in fact, $103 million, exactly. That's not a great number, it's over 100 million, but the first three months of this year are kind of disastrous, especially for theater owners. So returning quickly to the shadows though, there are ghosts of reboots past that keep being brought up, apparitions that the mainstream just can't seem to get their, out of their heads. They're haunting the halls of cinematic history and reminding those infected with the mind virus of a great loss that they experienced in the same year. And when asked, Ernie Hudson actually reflected on the ill-fated 2016 reboot, and he plainly said that this that project just didn't resonate with fans. No kidding. I mean, if you go around poo-pooing the films that came before it, I don't know that you're going to get a lot of uh, emotional buy-in from your audience, are you, Mr. Fee? So on the global stage, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire starts at a soft 61.6 .6 million in earnings with several markets that are not yet reporting and many more that are actually going to be added in in the coming days because the film didn't release everywhere. But with that, one of the biggest concerns is being that it will fall directly in competition with Godzilla X Kong. You see, these monsters keep getting in the way. I mean, they could open simultaneously in those markets and that would be very bad for Ghostbusters. It's a very bad sign for overall global performance, indeed. So I guess the question is, will the spirits endure in the long run? Uh, will the movie have enough legs and people willing to go see it again or see it for the first time at least that'll build up those numbers. But for now, this wraps up our haunted look at the scary box office this last weekend. And I mean that in every measure of that word. But let me know what you think about Ghostbusters Frozen Empire and all the other films that round out our top five. You can do that down in the comments section below. I mean, what effect do you think Godzilla X Kong will have on Ghostbusters earnings since they're so close, close together. And are there any films that you're going to see this wonderful week? I'd like to know. Use the comment section below for that as well. Hit the like button on your way out. And if you don't mind, until next time, be sure to take care of yourself, take care of others. Till much later, see you.